Well, hello there, friends! This day has come. Blast Paris Major 2023 has started. The last major in CSGO history. A landmark event for all esports, which means we can expect a lot of crazy CS. Only the best teams in the world, the best players, and the best emotions. We begin a great journey towards the finish line of our favorite game. Let's represent CSGO with dignity. So, let's get straight to it. As always, we start with the news and the reshuffles. All the rumors turned out to be true and Kenny has indeed left Falcons, along with Python. Now only NBK, Body, and Misuta remain on the team. Kenny will return to streaming and will be content creator for the organization. Here's how he himself reacted. I'm truly grateful for the chance that has been given to me. I had the chance to qualify and play the last CSGO major in my home country. Sadly, it won't be the case. It's painful and will remain one of the biggest regrets of my career. Well, Kenny... Will we will be waiting for you in CS2. And that's not all the changes in the French pro scene. Shox also announced that he is leaving his own organization, and Yojin has also left the team. As Shox writes, the Nakama project required not only money, but also energy from him. And in the end, nothing really worked out. So now he just plans to return to the role of a regular player, and apparently it will happen in CS2. The most unexpected thing happened in the Turkish Dream Team. They removed Emo and instead took someone you won't believe. Waxic. Eternal Fire just takes and mixes their own players back and forth. Their captain, Major, reacted appropriately. We're like a safe, trying different combinations to open the treasure. Well, good luck to the Turkish enthusiasts. Now we have some unofficial reshuffles, just rumors. According to the information provided by Harumi, Bad Boom are still trying to put together a new lineup. It didn't work out with Boomich and Kron. They decided to try something new. Now Rufire will be assembling the new 5. This guy has found almost half of the top talents from the CIS, so now we can expect a very powerful team to appear. And we continue to talk about the roster changes. Here Boros gave a very unexpected interview just before the major. He said, I'm not thinking about it right now, but of course I want the best for me and I would like to be in a top 10 team. I don't care if it's Monte or another team, I just want to make it. It seems like Boros may have leave Monte if they fail at the major. The next news is related to the Pecam challenge. The thing is, they weren't closed when the major started and you could have changed them even after some of the first matches. So some players rushed and changed their picks based on the results of the first matches. But as it turned out, this is not Valve's fault. The tournament organizers, Blast, had to deal with that. So they kinda screwed up and we were able to change our picks when the first results came in. Well, well, I guess that's just another nice move by Blast. Now let's move to the scandals that have happened in our community recently. The first one happened between Senya and Dosia. It seemed impossible to criticize the CEO of Sax, but Senya managed somehow. Basically, Dosia decided to participate in a memorable event about the Russian army that participated in the World War II, the Immortal Regiment, in Minecraft and Garry's mode, which Senya didn't like at all. Dosia always какое-то отдельное уважение у меня, а, несмотря, конечно, на то, что он гражданин России, там и т.д. и т.д. и т.д. Но, насколько вы заметили, Доси вообще такой персонаж, который, ну, наверное, всех там бывших киберспортсменов собрал и собирает всегда меньше всего хейта. Но вот эта вся хуйня, типа, типа бессмертный полк, Дося, Миша, за сколько? За 2000 долларов? Там 150 тысяч рублей? За 200 тысяч рублей? Типа оно того стоит? Ну, я просто, просто в шоке. Честно, вот это, знаешь, ты уже авторитетный, уважаемый человек, и за там 3000 долларов продать свою жопу, это, конечно, сильно. Дося responded pretty quickly. Всем привет, ребят. Хотелось бы внести небольшую ясность. Бессмертный полк это движение, память о участниках и погибших в Великой Отечественной войне. Если в вашей голове там каким-то образом с последними событиями, да, там последних лет, скажем так, находится связь между двумя этими вещами, мне очень жаль. Вот. И говорить, что это какая-то проплаченная... Я, по-моему, было сказано, мне кажется, что, ну, 
и наши, и ваши деды там воевали, и прадеды, нет? And moving on, we have an unexpected interview with Device, where he revealed more details about his move to NAP. Two months after moving to Sweden, I found out that Emilia Holt was cheating on me with one of my closest friends. Apparently many knew about it, but I didn't. It was a very unusual feeling. This also became the reason for my isolation, and I didn't know anyone in Sweden except for the players of Ninjas in Pyjamas. As a result, after moving to NIP, I was alone in Sweden, without friends or a girlfriend. It was getting worse and worse for me, and I couldn't deal with it. Emilia Holt, what are you doing to our device? Because of you, he moved to NIP, and then this. In any case, let's wish device good luck, so that he figures everything out and finds finally starts enjoying CS, relationships and, most importantly, life again. That's what I also wish for all of you guys. The next scandal happened at the Major. Fours and Monte were facing each other with a score of 1-1. Since the RMR times, the teams and their fans have had a strong dislike for each other. Remember the scandal when they didn't shake hands after the match? That was just the beginning. After the match, a new scandal erupted. It all started when Fours player result wrote in the game chat. They're running like hell at the end of the game. Jerry then spoke up and said that the teams didn't shake hands, of course. Руки мы после игры не жали, понятное дело. Кулачки тоже не отбивали. Then he continued on Twitter and wrote to DemQ that apparently his time with Akuma and Raider Hacks is over. DemQ replied, I think you have to write something about the RMR. Ah, I forgot, you've put your mouth in your ass, right? Monte's social media account also joined the conversation, saying that you're just stupid, keep sponsoring the killing of innocent civilians in the neighboring country and laugh about it. You don't belong in a civilized world. Actually, Monte decided to chat with everyone, including Thorin and many others who happened to be in the way. In response, Thorin wrote that Monte can't handle this Twitter account and they still have a long way to go before the Major. Forza's official account simply didn't include Monte's logo on the match results. It could have continued forever, but then Force player Shelfe came to the rescue. No, не нужно в поздравлениях приплетать в эти поздравления все что угодно, не нужно оскорблять игроков, не нужно писать какие-то гадости про Украину и так далее. Мы все люди, так что выражайте свой респект. Не нужно превращаться в дерьмо. Zorte expressed some similar thoughts to the community. It seems that the scandal had ended, everyone exchanged pleasantries and moved on. But unfortunately, the next day there was an interview with Jerry on HLTV, where he talked about the match with Monte again. It might be like that, but the only case here that gives me energy is that DemQ was playing in Akuma in the RMR in 2020, and he was probably playing with the cheaters, everyone knows that. But no one can prove it because it's Counter-Strike, we don't have an institute to detect cheats because they might be really good. That was the only motivation, I think, because when you play against an ex-cheater at a major, you have to win. About handshaking? I think it's just their choice, and we don't really care. After that, it all started again. They remembered Akuma and went after it. Overdrive and Russian caster Leninev joined in. It all started when Overdrive expressed his opinion about DemQ from Monte, and Leninev watched the clip on his stream. <laughs> Чуваке, который играл в команде с читами. Слабохарактерный дол, который пытался Суждаю. с читами за, ну, попасть на мажор. Тут он каким-то чудом попал в команду, где ему керрят. И... Вот он на этой теме тоже, ну, как бы научился плюс-минус стрелять и что-то делать. То есть, ну, я не скажу, что демки бот. Он это неправда. Демки играет, ну, с... обычный тир 2 игрок. So, after that, the real nightmare unleashed. Overdrive joined Leninev's stream and invited him to Discord to discuss Akuma and who was cheating and who wasn't. This escalated into a big conflict. Aggression. Да, и понятно, слился, значит слился. До свидания, бля. Просто такие, такой клоун, блядь, показушный. Не ожидал от него. Совсем просто ебать, ты на голову, блядь. Мы и по кума обсуждаем, или еще чем еще обсудить? 
They spent a long time trying to discuss it, with Leninov insisting on his point of view and Overdrive defending his. Eventually, after exchanging personal messages for half an hour, they called each other on Discord. Leninov demanded evidence and Overdrive replied that all the pro players in that RMR were sure that Akuma was cheating. Blade said he was sure and Simple, as far as I remember, said the same. So it was harder to say who was defending Akuma. However, Leninov demanded clear evidence. The opinion of pro players is not a fact, and he tried to get some evidence out of Overdrive. Два чувак выиграл 4 турнира в 2023 году, но ты все равно считаешь, что у тебя есть неопровержимые факты, потому что вы тогда собрались со всеми про игроками, в частности с Хучом, который один из самых ярких критиков команды Акума, по которой потом Сенсея подписывает к себе в команду. И ты говоришь, что он такой плохой, что значит они четырили, но доказательств нет. Есть только мнение. Какое ты право в таком случае имеешь говорить, что это факты, а не мнение. И какое право ты имеешь оскорблять человека, называя его читером, если у тебя доказательств ровно ноль. У тебя есть только мнение. Мнение профессионального комьюнити, которое мы, может быть, очень сильно и уважаем, но тем не менее, это все-таки мнение. Тебе надо рэп писать, ты, у тебя голос идеальный. Да, у меня просто горит, у меня горит от, вот, за, это обостренное чувство справедливости. In the end, they didn't agree on anything. Overdrive said that he had his opinion and the opinions of hundreds of pro players, and that was a fact. Leninov stated that this was not a fact, it was just opinions, and they had no right to call Akuma cheaters until it was officially proven. And this is how they spent 30 minutes. And what's more interesting that a huge number of people began to watch this argument. Even pro players joined in. Simple was watching the stream and Manesi wrote, what is he talking about? Send him a couple of clips, maybe he'll understand. This was apparently addressed to Leninov. Then Rufire joined in, saying that everyone recognized them as cheaters. The major champion from Gambit, Mo, wrote in the chat that DMQ was playing well, but the fact that they used Raider on the RMR is a fact. Other streamers and bloggers joined in too, and the hype was real. A famous Ukrainian blogger, Inkmate, asked, are Akuma cheaters? To which Sergei's replied, I'm curious myself, reminding everyone that he was a former Akuma player. In the end, they didn't come to any conclusion, but it's funny that the whole CS community got involved again, even though it's been almost two years. So, are Akuma cheaters or not? But honestly, no one ever talked about DemQ. Like, everyone discussed Sensei and Sergei's, but no one even discussed DemQ. And the conflicts didn't end there. During the phase and force match, there was a cringy situation. Many on the stream noticed that someone had left a force graffiti on a trash can on overpass. And then they noticed that Rain had put the Monte logo on Nuke. And it went viral everywhere that supposedly FaZe did it on purpose. Because Rain's wife is from Ukraine and that's how they express their position. However, it became quickly clear that it was Result who did it. He was just joking around and put the Forza graffiti on on a trash can. Phew! Finally, we're done with the conflicts. Let's move on to the regular news. For example, the sheikhs from Saudi Arabia announced their tournament for $1 million. It will be held in late August with Navi, Cloud9, VP, G2, FaZe, Heroic and Team Liquid participating. In short, all the top teams have already applied, so we won't be left without CS this summer for sure. Currently, the tournament is announced for CSGO, but let's hope they can change it to CS2 if needed. So the first tournament for the newest game and right away for a million bucks, it would be great, especially since all the top teams will be there. The second news is related to stickers. As Kenny said, capsules from the challengers stage bring players about $150,000 each to each player. And if you made it to the legends stage and even better, won the major, you can get from $500,000 to $1 million. If I understood it correctly, it's not the prize money of $1 million, 
course for the whole team it's just everyone gets a million well to be honest even one hundred and fifty thousand dollars from the challenger stage won't hurt so i think it's clear now why the team sweats so much at the rmr there is also an interview with the legendary navi captain zeus given to uko for two hours long which i can possibly translate for you later today we already have so many different info occasions and scandals i just can't touch it and if you're interested in this interview just write a comment down below the next news came from liquid coach daps it turns out he kinder changed roles and now he's the captain of team liquid the main reason for it was that we had the two-week boot camp and nitro had things that he had to deal with so he couldn't be there for like five or six days we did three maps with me screaming in place of him so we could still practice and we kind of made a decision halfway through the boot camp that he kinder will just call because he has more reps on these maps we were like creating all the things together and stuff and he kinder was already secondary calling so it's not like a massive shift so for this tournament he kinder is the igl and nitro is second igl and well nav told in an interview why everything happened so bad during the challenger stage when we lost our games we just went back to the room and instantly reviewed them asking ourselves why the fuck are we doing these things we're doing we just need to improve day by day and i think today in a match with flaxo it showed we're doing that the next interview was given by rain where he said that he has no plans to go anywhere and seems to have decided to play for phase for another couple of decades yeah i don't know what the fuck everybody is talking about i also read somewhere that pimp was talking on the analyst desk that i was planning on retiring as well there is no plans about this i just re-signed a contract with phase i'm here to stay my family my wife everybody's really supportive on what i'm doing i'm not going anywhere and you know seeing how he plays right now at the major i think that even in years he will be kicking ass in cs2 however the future of face clan is not so shiny and bright according to analysts they're in a very bad financial situation and may only have the time until the end of the year before they have to sell the whole organization news has appeared that the top management is seriously considering selling the entire face clan however the organization unveiled their new home somewhere in the united states yesterday it's worth eight million dollars so that's probably where all the money went although a face clan analyst inner shine wrote on his telegram channel that things are not really like that in fact face clan is not putting anyone up for sale and stakeholders can now sell their shares which were previously restricted so basically the news was just fake and misinterpreted and now let's move to the last interview for today it was from snappy where the captain praised himself i sincerely believe that i'm the best danish captain me glaive kerrigan hooksy and kadian probably have to think that we're the best because we compete and face each other however i do it with a much smaller budget than they have i race players from tier 2 to tier 1 so i consider myself the best i believe in myself and the current team it doesn't matter how crazy my statement is but i think i'm the best right now friends do you agree with him do you really think he's the best captain at the moment write in the comments below and the last piece of news for today is that valve updated the steam rules and there are suspicions that the skin market could change significantly now first of all they officially banned smurfing which is when a global players play on a silver account just to satisfy their egos also one of the points prohibits commercial activity and gambling there is a speculation about what this means but as i understood from the comments this could seriously disrupt all sorts of roulettes and skin casinos if valve wants to this means that if you connect your account to such a site something can be done to you on steam itself this is just a community opinion and there has been no cases yet also on the steam market they are now withholding the funds for sales of skins at inflated prices and for transactions without overpayment in short valve is really serious about steam right now and they are might be preparing the ground for cs2 and now let's move on to the results of the challenger stage here is a table with the team results who made it to the legend stage and who unfortunately got eliminated in short the challenger stage was quite expected and without any loud surprises so g2 and ends easily with a 3-0 score passed to the next stage and while everyone expected g2 to do well it was ends 3-0 victory that surprised many especially considering that they defeated phase in a best of three by the way after the match with phase snappy gave an amusing interview about it he was asked how they stopped 
phases come back and he said, I don't know, I just held the ram. As for now, Snappy manages to handle newcomers so well, but he also said straightforwardly that there's no secret in it. You just need to be smart. Congratulations to the guys on such an excellent result. The next three teams to pass with a score of 3-1 were Apex, FaZe and NIP. We have already talked about FaZe. They could have made it 3-0, but if it weren't for excellent game from Ants. However, considering their failure at the RMR and uh, how they managed to make it to the Major through the last chance bracket, advancing to the Legends stage with a 3-1 score seems like a good result. It was also pleasant to watch NIP play. It seems like the guys are moving in the right direction and improving their previously unstable gameplay. The only surprise here was Apex. The guys played well in one match and in other match they were lucky with the opponents and here they are in the Legends stage and we congratulate them on that. The last three teams to make it to the Major were Monte, Team Liquid and Gamer Legion. And here anyone could have made it, for example OG or Mouse, whose gameplay at the Major didn't go well. Perhaps everyone expected a little more confident game from Team Liquid, as they were on the verge of elimination with a 0-2 score, but they still managed to make a comeback. By the way, this Major has already made history because, along with Liquid, Gamer Legion also made a 0-2 comeback. This has never happened at any major before. GL is generally great. On their way they defeated the previously mentioned OG and Mouse and honestly they really deserved their slot in the fight with decent teams that also had the chances to advance. Congratulations to the guys. And finally the list of teams that failed to advance to the next stage. It includes Force, Greyhound, Pain Gaming, Complexity, the Mongols, OG, Mouse and Fluxo. These all are for the most part underdogs except for OG and and Mouse, and while OG was previously known for their unstable gameplay, many expected much more from Mouse especially after the Major in Rio, but unfortunately things didn't go well for the young team. But that's why they're young, their whole careers are ahead, so we wish them and all the other teams good luck in future tournaments. Well friends, that's all from me for today, let's continue to follow the last CSGO Major. Ahead of us we have the Legends stage and something tells me that we have to expect a lot of hot matches, real dramas and more news, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything CSGO related. Well, I'm I'm not saying goodbye for a long time, see you soon.